Kristen Sullivan, Executive Director at the Ward Museum. Earlier this week, I got the chance to talk with Jeff Bounds, one of our 2022 to 2023 living legends. Jeff is really regarded as the voice of worlds, the person at the center of it all at the Ward World Championship for decades now. An incredibly important volunteer on stage, making sure everyone knows what's happening all weekend long. Jeff is the son of Charlie Bounds, one of the founding fathers of the Ward Foundation, and like his dad, Jeff has dedicated much of his life to supporting wildfowl art. He and his sister Marg have also sponsored the Masters Medallions at Worlds for years. We're really lucky to have him as part of our community, and I was excited to talk with him. I hope you enjoy. All right, so can we start by having you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how did you get into wildfowl art and the Ward World Championship? Well, I think you pretty well annotated everything that's happened. <laughs> you know, I was raised in it. I was raised in it. I started duck hunting with my father when I was 12 years old. That was a long time ago, by the way, another century. And we hunted over ward decoys. We had a blind the size of this room full of baskets of canvas back and blue bill decoys. And as, the, as we used them and broke them, we threw them in the marsh and kept the weight and the string because that was cost more than the decoy did in those days. <laughs> it's kind of funny, it's criminal now when you think about it, but that's how I got into it. And as it went on, I ended up uh, being a helicopter pilot in Vietnam when I came back in 1970. It was the beginning, that's when dad and the group had gotten together and started this whole chain, I guess I'd say. And I was here for the fall show in 71. I got out of the military in 71, so that, that was about when I started and I was, I wear a tag when I come to the show that says advisory board, and I always say the same thing. I was advised that I was gonna be there all weekend working for him and doing stuff. So that's, that's kind of how the sons of the founding fathers ended up being on the advisory board, because we didn't advise anybody about anything. We were advised that we were gonna be working all weekend. And that's kind of where it came from. And from that point on, for me, it was fascinating because I got to talk to people who are so creative and have talents that I can only imagine would be something that you could do because I, you know, I can't do much of anything. After all, banging a nail, you know, it's, I hit my thumb every once in a while. But, but yeah, it's and as it's gone on, I started out being a clerk, a runner, working, doing whatever I was told to do. It just go do this, go do that. I was here for registration. I was always there for registrations on the nights before, putting stuff on the tables. I've broken a couple pieces. It scared me to death when I did that, by the way. Um, but those things happen. And as it went about, Fred Kreiser announced every single winner uh, honorable mention everything at the shows, and it was just a drone, da 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 da, -da. and they, he got tired, and he'd say, "Come, I'm a, I'm a retired air traffic controller. I'm used to talking on a microphone, so it didn't bother me." So they, they pressed me into service doing that, and then one day down the road, I can't remember who said it to me one one year, they said, "You are no longer going to work the floor as a clerk for Worlds. You are going to be the announcer. Period." I said, whatever I need to do to help, that's my job. Tell me what to do, like you do. <laughs> like, be here, I wanna to talk to you. And, and since then, I've been up there all along and I've made a lot of friends, a lot of wonderful, wonderful people. My favorite part of the show is seeing everybody again each year. And I guess I'm happiest when I see the, the Cajuns. They're the fun people, more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And uh, I've watched uh, Pat God's children grow up from infants to adults and marry and have their own. And just, it's just been part of my life. And I did it because my dad wanted me to. And now I do it because I want to. And that's even better. What was the competition like in the early days and maybe what are some of your early memories of the show? 
When I look at the pieces in the museum today from back when, the, when it started and I look at what comes in now, it's mind-boggling. It really is the difference uh, in the quality of the work. I mean, it was more like a working decoy business or a working creation uh, business. There were people who did really unbelievable stuff, Granger McCoy and people like that, who just did stuff you just couldn't even fathom that one person could do by themselves. But overall, the, the, the decoys were smooth, you know, they didn't, they didn't have a lot of feathers sticking out. Now you see every feather, you see every muscle. These, the people who make these carvings are anatomically, they're anatomically correct. They study it, they know, they know the birds, they know the, the way they look and see. And I think the thing that they always liked was, in those days, there were personalities that didn't get along with anybody. You know, there were high and mighty, and there were some not. But this show seemed to bring everybody to the same level. But uh, you know, overall, it grew and it grew and it grew and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, and just I just loved seeing the people that I hadn't seen before and meeting people, meeting some people like Guy Koliak. You know. And I think that I formed, I, formed fa I formed friendships that have lasted my life. Uh, that is what I enjoy the most of it, you know, is seeing, renewing those friends. It's like we didn't, we haven't been apart for a year. They're here for a weekend, and it's just like it was yesterday when they were here before. Uh, I've also gone to gone to Canada and hunted with Godin, people like that. Gone to gone to New Orleans and gone all the way down to the bayous to see Jimmy VCA and Tan, and those people have made have been a part of my life, and I've been blessed to know them all. What are some of the, the other changes that you've seen over the years? I was trying to think. It's just I, the quality of the work just kept getting better and better and better. And I was clerking in those days for Worlds and Decorative Life Size, and I still, to this day, have to reach out sometimes and touch them to see whether they're real or not. You know, because I did that then and I do it now because I could get away with it then. I could touch them because <laughs> I was supposed to be moving around so the judges could see them anyway. But uh, and it was fun being an, arbit an arbitrator when the when the, the the personalities would clash on picking a winner or picking somebody who placed in, in it. But I've always, I've always enjoyed the look on people's faces when they were announced as winners. And I've, and I've enjoyed doing it too, because I get to read them first. So I can kind of look around and find, I could look around and find one of the Brene boys and I'd find Tan. And when I first announced one of them as a winner, I could watch Tan break out and start bawling and crying right out loud. You know, and as and I, I just go, I'd look around and say, "Oh boy, here we go!" You know, because <laughs> we we knew it was going to happen, and uh, I still I still like that being there, being part of it. You know, I I just enjoy it. Oh, that's sweet. It, it's I guess it's part of my heritage. Mm -hmm. You know, but it but. I would have done it, and I've always done it for nothing, you know, for free. It's not like we get paid or anything like that. It's the reward is being there and being with the, that class of people who are so creative. So why do you like being the announcer still? So it sounds like you were, you were pressed into service. <laughs> you had to at one point, but you continued to do it and, and are, I mean, the voice of the world. So, so why do you continue to do that instead of another position? Uh, I guess my ego gets, gets, gets in front of me, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun being the center of attention, <laughs> you know, uh, to say that, you know, that's certainly not a lie, you know. And, uh, but, I don't know, I like, I like knowing who's winning before anybody else does, you know, except for you guys who wrote it down, <laughs> you know, who brought me to the list. You know, but, and I, I, I enjoy, but... My voice projects, mm -hmm. it carries. Uh, I don't have to have a microphone, because mm -hmm. I could carry that arena with my voice. It's part of being 
talking on radios or flying. I was a pilot and you know, air traffic controller. He just used to talk in your voice project. And my, I'm loud mouth anyway, my wife says. <laughs> so keep it down, we're in a restaurant. You know? <laughs> I, I just enjoy being there. I just, I look forward to it. And it's kind of funny because I would have, I used to go get uh, Bloody Mary mix from one of the local restaurants and the, a lot of the artists and carvers would come after their judging mm -hmm. and just to get a little, little toddy mm -hmm. and I kind of snuck it in the stage because then they didn't have to pay for it. They thought it was cool they didn't have to pay for it because there was a cash bar, you know. And, yep. I was kind of, my friends, you know, and I consider them all friends, you know. There's some, even now, J.B. Garton calls me probably once a month. We talk, and he's, what well, he was the first winner of, well, I forget Paris. what it was, Paris, yeah. Paris, yeah. The very first one, and he is 90-some now. I, t I, I just enjoy talking to him, he's like, a, he's a history lesson. And a lot of those old guys really were. We used to sit at uh, Newt, well, was it Newt? No, who had the place in Ocean City? Where Seagard Daisy would hold court mm -hmm. and tell jokes and tell stories. And everybody would just sit around in, in dumbfounded amazement because the guy could talk forever mm -hmm. and make you laugh. And you just hear the, you hear the background, a lot of these guys who were market gunners who, who made a living killing birds. And now they're making a living carving them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty cool. Very cool. When I picture Jeff Bounds, I picture a blue blazer and a red tie and, you know, the uniform. How did the uniform start? That's what all the dad and all the group that started this wore. They all, everybody, and even the ladies. All wore blue blazers. They didn't have to wear a tie, but they wore a blue, uh, blue button down. And uh, khakis. I was a, you know, of course, I've never worn socks, so, but you know, loaf, loafers and uh, it was, that was called, the, that was the uniform, and that's how we could find each other in the crowd. There were that many people there. I mean, you, you've seen it, you've probably seen the old pictures. I mean, that arena was full of people, hundreds of people, you know, and you just couldn't see, you, had, you could look around and find somebody with a blue coat on, saying, well, that's where they are right there, or send somebody to them, or try and, like you, you're the, you're the boss. If, if we needed you, we could find you because you have the blue blazer on. When you, when your camouflage, when you're wearing regular clothes, well, I can't find you. Yeah. And you do that well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that started, and and I, I felt obligated to continue it. And I'm the only person there that's got one on, most of, you know. But but I guess it's a recognizable uniform. I call it the uniform of the ward. I love it. Really and truly, it's called the Eastern Shore Tuxedo. Um, I feel like you maybe have touched on this a little bit, but what's, what's your favorite part about the Ward World Championship? Well, for me, seeing old friends again. That's, that's got to be right at the top. That and watching the joy in their faces when they win, you know. Because they, they, they get me, I, I'll tear up. I get a tear in my eye. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel that emotion. I feel it too. Because they worked hard. They worked hard to make those creations. And when they get the, not the notoriety that they deserve, it's neat to be part of it. And I got to, be, I got to read it out loud and tell them that they were winners. And that's a special feeling. What do you look for for the future of the competition? Did it never go away? And I know, you know, what I've seen is the the size of it. The quality went up. I think. I'm pretty sure that the, the, the quality of the work went up, but the volume went down considerably. I mean, it took hours and hours and hours to judge certain tables back in the day. There were hundreds of pieces in each species, you know. I mean, it was just, it just took a long time, especially doing the, prof the professional table. It was the professional table then, you know. Just, wow. Um, I want to give you a moment, though. You know, as, as one of the three 2022 to 2023 living legends, is there anything that you'd like to say to your mentors, friends, and anybody else who might be watching? Well, I don't... 
I'm not in that group of people who, who create things. And so I was surprised when you let me know. And I thought, well, why me? You know, I've been recognized a number of times for being a helper, you know, volunteer. And that's what it is, you know. I mean, do I feel obligated to do it? Family-wise, oh yeah, I do. I think that one of us, Margaret's in it, and I'm in it. You know, we're in it till we die. I'm just surprised that anybody really gives a damn. <laughs> because, but then there are people. I, got to, I probably told you this before, but I was at uh, Seawee in Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, I was walking, Jan and I, and this was a black tie event. I'm walking through the, the, the arena, talking to, to Jan, or talking to somebody who I knew there, and behind my her, I hear Jeff Bounds' voice. <laughs> And it was one of the carved arbor artists, one of the one of the people who was all was the show. And she heard, she knew my voice. Mm -hmm. And I've heard had a number of people always say to me, said, said, I know I'm here when I hear your voice. Mm -hmm. Said it wouldn't be the same. And that's a nice thing. I, I mean, that's a, there's a tear in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> to have somebody say that, but I've, I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it. But yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm very thankful that, that you think it's important. Well, we're absolutely grateful for everything that you do for us, seriously, for the, for the competition, for the foundation, um, for all of our staff, you're just there for anything that we've needed you for, and I, I can't say thank you enough. You really are, I mean, you're the center of the room, you're the center of that competition in a lot of ways, and so thank you, Jeff, and congratulations again on being one of the 2022 to 2023 Living Legends. Thank you. <laughs>